Envision yourself standing barefoot on a pristine beach, the warm embrace of the sun heating the sand beneath your feet. As you wiggle your toes, the surface's warmth yields to an unexpected coolness below, a delightful relief hidden from the sun's touch. This surprising contrast beckons a question. What lies beneath the endless expanse of sand? Is it merely more grains stretching into infinity, or is there something more, a secret buried under the countless particles? In this exploration, we're set to delve deep, not just into the sand, but into the mysteries it conceals. Did you know that in a groundbreaking study, researchers posited the existence of over seven quintillion, 500 quadrillion grains of sand across the Earth's vast beaches? That's a staggering 7.5, followed by 18 zeros. But beyond the numbers, what is sand, really? At its essence, sand is comprised of minuscule pieces of rocks and minerals, each with its own tail. Yet not all sand shares the same story or substance. The soft, fine grains that caress your feet along the shoreline differ vastly from the coarser, more uniform grains found in the heart of the desert. This distinction stems from their formation processes. For instance, beach sand predominantly consists of quartz and shell fragments, finely ground by the ocean's relentless churn, while desert sand boasts a composition rich in feldspar shaped by the wind's sculpting hand. Today we embark on a journey to unravel the mysteries of sand, from the unique ways it's formed to the diverse landscapes it creates and sustains, we'll discover the hidden wonders beneath the grains. Join us as we uncover the fascinating world of sand, revealing the secrets that lie beneath and beyond. Sand is not just a substance, it's a storyteller whispering tales of ancient earth, of mountains that have weathered the test of time, and of rivers that have carved their paths through the land. But to truly understand these whispers, we must ask, what is sand and how is it formed? At its most basic, sand is a collection of tiny particles, the product of billions of years of geological processes, these particles come from the gradual breakdown of rocks, the primary constituents of the Earth's crust. This breakdown occurs through a fascinating process known as weathering. Weathering can be physical, like the relentless beating of waves against a cliff, chipping off tiny pieces over eons. It can be chemical, where water and gases, sometimes as mild as the air itself, react with rock to break it down into smaller components. Biological weathering also plays a role, with plant roots breaking through rock as they grow and animals burrowing into the earth, both contributing to the gradual disintegration of solid rock into sand. The journey of a single grain of sand can be a long one. Originating from the breakdown of a larger rock, this grain might travel thousands of miles, carried by rivers, winds or waves, constantly being reshaped and refined along the way. This journey is not just a physical movement, but a transformation, turning rough, angular rock fragments into the smooth, round grains that we recognize as sand. The variety of sand's origin stories is as vast as the Earth itself. The quartz sands, beloved for their durability and resistance to weathering, often begin their journey deep within mountains. Feldspar, another common sand component, tells a tale of granite, a rock formed from the cooling of magma deep within the earth. Then there's volcanic sand, born from fire and fury, its grains sharp and angular, a stark contrast to the smoothness of riverbed sands. As these grains settle, whether on a riverbank, a beach or a desert floor, they form a layer of history beneath our feet. Each layer, each grain, is a chapter in the earth's story a story that spans billions of years. When we imagine sand, many of us picture the beach, that boundary between land and sea, where the ocean's embrace meets the Earth's solidity. But beach sand is more than just a backdrop for seaside holidays. It's a kaleidoscope of geology and biology. 
The color of beach sand is a direct reflection of its geological and biological heritage. The pristine whites and pinks of some tropical beaches owe their hues to the abundance of coral and shells in their vicinity. Over time, these calcareous materials, once part of living organisms, are ground down by the action of waves and currents to form fine, white sand. On some beaches, the sand can even take on a pinkish hue, thanks to the presence of microscopic organisms with red or pink shells that blend with the white sand to create a stunning visual effect. But not all beaches follow this pattern. In regions with high volcanic activity, beaches can have dramatically different appearances. The sands of these beaches can be black, a direct result of the erosion of volcanic rocks and lava flows. These grains, often much younger geologically than their quartz cousins, tell a story of a land shaped by fire. The texture of beach sand also varies widely, influenced by the local wave energy and the tidal range. On beaches with strong waves, sand tends to be coarser as the powerful water action carries away finer particles. Conversely, in sheltered areas, sand can be very fine and soft, a testament to the gentler environmental conditions. Beyond its beauty and variety, beach sand plays a crucial role in coastal ecosystems. It acts as a habitat for numerous creatures, from the microscopic organisms that color some sands pink, to crabs and turtles that rely on beaches for nesting. Sand also serves as a natural buffer, protecting inland areas from storm surges and the erosive power of the ocean. The deserts of the world with their vast expanses of sand offer a starkly different narrative. Here the sand tells tales not of water's embrace, but of wind's sculpting hand. Desert sands are shaped by a history of dryness, their grains finer and more uniform due to the relentless action of the wind. The Sahara, the Gobi, the Arabian, each of these deserts has its own story reflected in the sand that covers its surface. Unlike beach sand, which is often shaped by the sea's cyclic forces, desert sand is sculpted by the wind into vast dunes that can reach heights of several hundred feet, resembling frozen waves on an ocean of sand. These dunes are not static, they are constantly on the move, driven by the wind. This creates a dynamic landscape, ever-changing and unpredictable. The sand here is older, having been ground down and weathered over much longer periods than its coastal counterpart. This long history of erosion contributes to the fine texture of desert sand, with its grains often too small to be grasped individually. The color of desert sand, too, varies depending on its mineral composition. The iron content in some sands gives them a reddish hue, seen in the deserts of Australia and Mars alike, offering a visual spectacle that captivates the imagination and speaks to the fiery heart of our planet's geological processes. So, how deep do we have to dig in the sand to get to bedrock at different locations, such as beaches and deserts? At the beach, as you begin to dig into the sand, the first layer you'll encounter is wet sand. This moisture increases as you delve deeper, reaching the saturated zone or phreatic zone where the sand is fully saturated with seawater. As you continue, you'll soon hit the water table, the upper boundary of this zone, where water begins to pool significantly. Digging further becomes challenging due to the accumulating water. However, if you persevere, you will eventually reach the bedrock. The depth at which you find bedrock can vary dramatically depending on the location. In coastal areas with recent geological activity or minimal sedimentation, the bedrock might be just a few meters below the surface. Conversely, in regions with extensive sedimentation history, accumulated over millennia, you might have to dig through tens of meters of sand before reaching the bedrock. These layers of sand over the bedrock not only shape the physical landscape, but also serve as historical archives, recording a range of climatic and environmental changes over the ages. 
In contrast, the situation in deserts can be markedly different. For example, in vast deserts like the Sahara or the Arabian Desert, the bedrock can be buried under several hundred meters of sand. The sands in these regions are typically older and have often traveled great distances shaped by wind rather than water, resulting in a finer and more uniform grain. This considerable depth contributes to the unique and ever-changing landscapes of deserts where sand dunes, though constantly reshaped by the wind, persistently mask the ancient bedrock below. The sand beneath our feet is not just a collection of tiny particles, it's a record of Earth's history, a testament to the dynamic processes that shape our world. From the formation of bedrock to the shifting sands of deserts, each element of our planet's surface tells a story of transformation. If the secrets beneath the sands have sparked your curiosity, if the tales of ancient landscapes and the endless cycle of creation and destruction have captivated your imagination, then join us on this continuous exploration of our planet. Subscribe and click here to watch our next video for more journeys into the mysteries that shape our world.